for the most part, you're not going to see them. Even though they're these giant salamanders, they blend right in with the bottom of the water. Their skin just blends right in and their body shape allows them to, to get in these spaces under their rocks. There's people that float right over top of a two-foot salamander and never notice it. People may never see them, but in healthy rivers, they may be there and they probably are there. It's part of a healthy ecosystem. It's part of a healthy river system. It's just a, a really neat symbol of our Appalachian Mountains, which are very old themselves. Hello. Hello, Bender. Hello, Bender. Hello, Bender. Yay. Good night. Of course, we're the hot spot for, for salamanders in the world, and our rivers and streams have some of the highest fish, crayfish, freshwater mussel diversity as well, and certainly some of the best hellbender populations remaining. I just feel like every time we get in the water, we learn something new. It's hard to explain to people what's below the surface, because you look out there and, yeah, it just looks like rocks, and you might see a fish swim by. The thing you realize when you're snorkeling underwater is that it's you know, an entire ecosystem using these rocks, entire food web. There are all these fish under there that you don't see from the surface. There are all of these stream bugs, all the different homes where all these different species live. And then there's a hellbender, and when you see one underwater, you're just blown away. and they really have to have all of those little spaces in between each rock. Different types of rocks provide cover, places for food, places to hang out and stay away from predators. If you snorkel and you look and see a hole, you'll see a hellbender head sticking out, and that's that guy's home. I mean, he might have that rock as his little home for years and years. They seem to just spend the whole year feeding and doing their own thing. Then around the end of August, early September, all of a sudden something triggers the males to go completely crazy and they start fighting with each other. Females are drawn to certain rocks that, have, that a male has staked out as the best nesting rock and he'll, he'll defend that rock. fighting with each other for millions of years, and now they're almost gone from most of the Appalachian streams. You can pretty much imagine that any mountain stream or any, any of the foothill streams throughout their range, throughout the Ohio Valley, Tennessee Valley, up into Pennsylvania, probably had hellbenders in the past. I think it's safe to say that we've probably lost 80 or 90 percent of the populations that used to be around. There's an Ozark subspecies of the hellbender that's in northern Arkansas and southern Missouri. Those have already been federally listed. I think it's kind of a scary thing. We're just watching these things decline really, really quickly. One of the big issues with hellbenders is siltation. You get these big plumes of mud. All that mud and silt just builds up in these rivers over time, and it fills in all these little spaces. The material is just accumulating, and that is what is filling up the space and the, the cavities among these rocks and burying these shelter rocks that hellbenders and other animals need to live and, and go through their life stages. We can really trace the problem of, of silt and sediment pollution back to how we're using the land in these watersheds. They are very sensitive to, to silt and sediment and pollution, and where they are not found anymore, those issues are, are a big problem. Hellbenders are one of the first things to go in these places, and the problem is just once they're gone, they're gone. Here's an animal that has to have clean, you know, almost perfect water quality and lots of food and lots of places to hide. 
it's hard to find places that are like this, like these last remaining crystal clear, rocky, non-sedimented streams. The best populations are now confined to high elevation, completely forested landscapes. And the only place you get that in the east is national forest land. Basically, the, the big national forest, Pisgah, Nantahala, Cherokee, Monongahela, these are, these are the last places that remain where you have these really pristine streams. Without national forest, hellbenders would probably be just about extinct right now. We want people to enjoy the rivers. We want them to come out. You know, I did the same thing as a kid. I was out splashing in the creeks and swimming and fishing. That's really where I got the love for water myself. So we want people out and be able to enjoy the resource, but we also want them to leave it as they found it. It's one thing to skip a stone with your child, but it's another thing when you're starting to move hundreds of rocks to build a dam or build some kind of chute to get a tube down. People may not mean any harm and they're just enjoying themselves, but moving these rocks around that hellbenders use can, can greatly disturb the spaces that the hellbenders are using. We find hellbenders quite a bit that are dead because of people lifting rocks and throwing rocks. And... So we really tried to start educating folks about that. We started about 10 years ago just putting some educational signs up, just saying don't move the rocks. And we've really had a good response out of it. I think we're well on our way to getting the word out there that they're awesome animals that have awesome habitat, and that awesome habitat needs to stay there. It just comes down to education. I think people are generally really good and want to do the right thing. When most people see one, there's something about them that they look like little dinosaurs. People see that there's hellbenders that inhabit a stream. There's going to be a lot of other organisms there, and they're going to be in good shape. I think people are starting to get the connection between some of those healthy fish populations and things like hellbenders, and it is all connected. People care about water quality, whether it's angling, uh, rafting, boating, just swimming and wading. We all want to do that in healthy rivers and streams. Think about that maybe water that you drink someday. So just the focus on healthy watersheds and keeping those streams healthy for, for organisms such as hellbenders. And maybe there's a chance to restore a lot of streams and bring them back to better hellbender habitat, which means better habitat for everything else that used to be here. It's kind of a symbol of our Appalachian mountain streams and an ambassador for a healthy aquatic ecosystem.